my um Chinatown Fair is probably was probably the most renowned arcade in the East in the whole East Coast. So, go to Chinatown Fair. That's where it's at. You know. <laughs> I went to see it back and forth mostly because they used to have OG games in there like Double Dragon and stuff like that. So I went a lot as a kid. At that time, there were a lot of arcades in Chinatown. So, you know, pretty much you could walk like a block away and find something. But um, Chinatown Fair was the only arcade that really persisted um, because, um, they, number one, they catered to fighting gamers, which is really big. So you had a lot of people in there all the time for fighting games, training up and stuff like that. It was definitely the pillar like of the East Coast State at least. Like a lot of famous players came from there. Like, you know, Sanford Kelly like also came from there. The the Justin there. Wong, yep. Nerd Josh, pretty, pretty much everybody that everybody mattered, everybody that mattered it, on the East Coast, like was at Chinatown Fair. That's that's kind of like where it all fucking you know starts for everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's like where the scene starts, the fucking arcade. Like that's where everybody's at. You that know, everybody that's where everybody's at. Like fuck going to my house. It's cramped. It's hot. Let's go to the arcade. Like. <laughs> exactly. So when I started going to Chinatown Fair, like around that time, um, that, that was during the era where the um, triads, like a lot of the Chinatown gangs, stopped going to Chinatown Fair. Because um, uh, around that time, before my time, it was always a place for like um, miscreants and gang violence. But by the time I went there, though, it was an entirely new crowd. And I went around the um, Second Impact day, she by three Second Impact. As time progressed, like um, you know, I started seeing like a lot of the same faces over the years. A lot of them became my friends, but also the demographics definitely changed. Arcade, it's like a family. You know, they they they, they teach you matchups, they teach you frame data. You get to meet some of the pros. Like you know, they come out and they they show love or whatever. Like it's just it's it's completely different. Like you don't have to walk around with a frown on your face. You know you know the frown face when you're at a tournament. You know, you're like this. Yeah. You concentrate. <laughs> it wasn't like that because you're just going in there for casuals. You know, and people understood that. But no matter how you are, how you look, what you're interested in, nobody there would judge you. I used to work there. I've worked there off and on pretty much my entire time going to CF. I've been hired and fired 13 times. So. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie on the app, like when you walk past it, like if you're on the street, like you, like we are here, and you're walking past it, it looks like a dump. <laughs> Yo, exposed pipes, exposed wiring, it was a brick wall, it, it was just to, painted. It used to be like a laundry mat or something. It was an no, it, hall, it, yeah. it was about it. had like these weird like Water lights pipes. built into the ceiling know, that didn't actually work. No either. windows, no air, no, no bathroom. We, actually, no CF no didn't even get an air conditioner yeah. until I think yeah, after yeah, CVS 2 yeah. came out. It was the two doors. And then it's, it's like, like a, really it's narrow, old, it's a narrow, fucking really, really walkway. narrow. With all these like old school, like you had like Metal Slug and Street Fighter fucking. Alpha Three. There was 20 tokens on each machine to play, and it just smelled like ass. And yeah, it was like it was July. It still used to smell. And it was July. It was probably like 110 and degrees. All that there. was before the bad. DDR machines. Yeah. Uh, man. Sweaty at times because DDR players and stuff. Uh. <laughs> once you pass, once you pass that little, you know, passageway, I'm gonna call it. Then it gateway to life. Yeah, then it opens up. Yeah. Then you yeah. get a. And you have the garbage cans out. It's like you would just throw food in there and like it would just smell up that whole area. You wouldn't want to walk past it because you would smell like the old Chinese food. Uh, well, Marvel 2 in the back, Tekken like, was over here. Capcom versus and I, SK2. Blaze Who was over here. Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 4, 4 was like had mad setups. Man, it was love in there, man. Like dirty as fuck, stinky, but it felt like home. Friday night for me was mainly like on the Marvel 2 cabinet and nothing but money matches. We had Desmond Pinkney, the executioner, Chris Matrix, Mike Infinite. We just be on the Marvel cabinet all night just playing for money. Everybody going crazy, getting hype. That's what basically Friday nights were. Remember the first day we had that machine, Yo, Justin came Booty. in and got, I think it was 87 wins on the first time he played. Don't know how, don't know why. It's been the same. It's been like that ever since. Yo, there was a 
the whole arcade was just full of people watching, but half the crowd was watching, half the crowd was trying to take him off. Nobody could do it. Never, I didn't learn how to do a Range of Demon from a manual yeah. or a fucking book. I learned it from somebody telling me at an arcade. Right. Some random. He, it, is like, it was like like wisdom. He came down and was like, look man, let me show you how to do it. He did it and he walked away. Never saw him again. <laughs> it was like a fucking ghost. Friday Chinatown Fair was definitely packed. You couldn't move. Like, you definitely couldn't move. And during Fridays, it would stay open until 3 o'clock. You know, and you'd have like a lot of people there cr cracking it out all night. And th there was pretty much no space to move around. It was that packed. And I, I know like a lot of the um, arcade scenes around the U.S. like pretty much like went kaput. But Chinatown Fair was running strong for a number of years. Due to, thanks partially due to Henry Sen. My goal is to uh, try to make people understand competitive gaming, you know, try to coach them, try to make them feel, you know, more enthusiastic about the scene. If someone has some questions or they want to get started, you know, you come and ask me. I'll tell you, I'll try to help you out, but you know, I wouldn't say I'm a mentor, but I try to be your friend, you know, because mentors are like a full-time job stuff, you know. I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much, we're all playing like at the next level exclusively, and, and, and like at Spooky's house. I mean, like it's not back because the next level is not open yet. It's not back to the old Chinatown Fair arcade days. We could just walk in and play. Like, um, pretty much for the most part, since they don't have like their licenses, they haven't passed their fire code yet. There's like these are pretty much like private, private. Like I, I say, because all semi-private semi -private semi -private gatherings for now. Like a lot of these games are available on consoles uh -huh. and like these people can easily play at home. Lag. What's that? Lag. What you if mean? you're gonna play at professional level you can't have anything like that. You know, rage quitters, I'm sure you heard that term. They, you're playing them and all of a sudden they're losing and they just leave. That's not competitive game playing. And for all you rage quitters out there, don't do that. Don't come here to mash buttons and say you're so good and come in you don't have a clue. You know, don't do that. This is not the place to do that here. You know? Come in, don't talk shit like you're so good because everyone here is a pro. They're going to whip your ass here. So where do you play now besides here in tournaments? Wherever they're at. Wherever they're at. Like if they have a lot of, um, like, like uh, they have them at like just random spots now. Like King of the Couch has done it. Like we, we went to like Buffalo Wild Wings one time for a tournament. It was, it was a tournament, so, you know. Next level seems more like a lounge to me. That's not fair was at its heart an arcade. And that was the last real arcade in New York, I think. No, I also want people to gather at one spot so they can know each other, make friendships, bonds, you know, learn strategies from each other, you know, that create creative thinking spark. It was a good environment, you know, I got Beast and DDR in the groove there, you know, it was other games, you know what I'm saying, you could learn other games and shit, like, it's, it's, it's just sad, you know, I wish it was still there, you know. It's, you would never expect for something to be there for so long to just, just close down, just disappear, you know, it's like somebody dying, basically. Trying to fair, it's like somebody dying, it's, it's like you had a relationship with the place and just disappeared, that's what it's like. I definitely agree. The only thing I missed at Chinatown Fair was to play my favorite games. Um, and that was what Chinatown Fair was, to play your favorite arcade games where you couldn't play anywhere else in New York. But now the next level has opened up. I'm pretty sure that I'll still have some nostalgia sometimes when I think about it, maybe. But no, not that much, honestly. I mean, I'm definitely sad because, like, you know, like that was kind of like a piece of my childhood that definitely like went away because I spent like a lot of years there. I made a lot of friends that I still know to this day. Like, I'm, not, I'm not, like these guys here, like I all met Chinatown. So like, it's definitely sad to see like um, a large part of like my childhood go. At the same time, like with Next Level being here, like I'm embracing the future. I don't think it's time for CF to reopen because I asked a very important question to the owner and I said, uh, 
I said, how are you going to fix the situation? If you give me a good plan and how you fix it, I'll support you. But if you don't have any idea and you're just going to go same type of business model, I don't think it's going to work out. Because, you know, if you help them out financially and the same thing occurs six months down the road, then there's no difference, right? You're just wasting money. You're just giving, you're just giving the landlord all the money and, you know, you're not trying to help the business or the community, you know. You're just in it for the profits for yourself. And look at this shit. TOA, we all had our time together. We all had our time together. It is a lot of stories like about people stealing from the change machine before they switch to tokens. Uh, yeah. Well, that was, uh, you know, I can't lie. I actually got fired for that once. <laughs> I <Huh>. closed. <laughs> <laughs>